then i will start the session okay uh, i request all of you just close your eyes just close your eyes just observe your breath we'll take five deep breaths inhale one out two three four five now very very gently please open your eyes very very gently please open your eyes okay i feel all of you got refreshed so yeah we'll start the session like he said so i'll be uh, so i call it as systems or she called it as best practices for best practices in a school i call it as systems in a school for example you should need a lot of systems in the school for it to grow and it has to function independently all of you know that a school should be independent of a person for example i am the director of the school the my school st gregory sandra school has to be independent of me it has to work independent I, whether i am there in the school or not it has to function correct all of you uh, whether you are there in the school or not it has to function that's an that's an organization or a school so uh, there are a lot of systems in school which help us to run the school right in st gregory school also there is a lot of systems like 30 40 systems will be there within this uh, one hour which is allotted to me we have selected four systems and i'll be explaining to you those four systems how we are doing the systems and at the end of the session we'll be uh, having a question answer session where you can ask me uh, any doubts which you have okay first let me explain what is the system um, let me take an example uh, of a system for example we'll take an uh, examination system as an example right so all of you have schools we have teachers the teachers teach the subject students learn the subjects anyway there is an examination right during the examination what the teachers has to prepare a question paper uh, we need to give the print out of question paper to students students need to write uh, we need to correct the uh, answer sheets give the mark sheets all this this is the system right examination system uh, for example if we take the question paper making an example for that the, the subject teacher will make a question paper maybe she'll be writing in a piece of paper she'll be giving it to the office team or she'll be typing it herself then she'll be taking the printout and giving it to the students, right? This is a system. But lately we are seeing that there's a lot of mistakes in the question paper, right? Spelling mistakes are there, grammatical mistakes are there. As schools, it is not acceptable, right? Like we making mistakes is not acceptable, right? So we have to do something in the system. For example, if there is a lot of spelling mistakes, the teacher will be writing on a piece of paper, maybe the question paper. The office team might be typing the questions then they'll be taking the printouts and given it to student before giving it to the student there should be some proofreading right any spelling mistakes any grammatical mistakes right then only it should be so some principal or a coordinator or an hod or the teacher herself has to go through the question paper proofread it and give it to the student so that there is no mistakes in the question paper you got my point so that's an examination system where so here i'm telling there are uh, some four steps in creating a system identify a problem create a system monitor the system and customize system in this example the problem is spelling mistakes coming in question paper the system is writing uh, the questions that type before before giving it to the students someone should proofread right then we will again monitor the system any mistakes again happening we will customize the system okay this is just an example of a system similarly there are a lot of systems in all of our schools in all of our schools has system in St. Gregory School, we have a lot of systems which we have built for a lot of time. Uh, we uh, and I have been in the system for eight years, and I have we have built some robust systems which have helped up helped us to grow to the what it is. So I'll give a just brief introduction about our school so that you will also get my point. Some of the schools will be in a city, some of the schools will be in towns. Let me be very frank. Our school is in a village. Okay, so my school's name is St. Gregory Central School. It's in the village called Tarawa, which is in the Kollam district of Kerala. So the system which I'm going to explain to you is a system which worked really well in a village area. But definitely I can guarantee you that it will work in your system, but in your school. But we need to customize as per our parents, as per our teachers, as per our geography. We need to customize, right? So I am going to explain four systems. 
uh, it's my humble attempt to explain to you this and my wish is at least one of you should implement at least one of the systems in your school then only the time which you're investing with me sneha ma'am and this lead webinar is going to be effective right all of you are investing next one hour with me so i will uh, give my 100 percentage to explain these things at the end of it you can ask me some doubts do you have any doubt in how i can implement this i have this challenge how i can implement it i'll uh, help you if i can help you i'll help okay all of you are with me let's start let's dive into the session i will try to make it as interactive as possible so the four systems are one is home visit second is medical forms third is 100% participation award for parents and fourth is use of an erp or a software okay these are the four system if time permits i have one more a bonus system if time is there we'll go through otherwise these are the four systems we'll cover okay we'll go to the first all of you are ready yes the first system's name is home visit okay can any of you type uh, no sound you are able to hear me right uh, someone has typed no sound say ha ma'am am audible right i am audible yes sir right? you are audible yes okay, okay. maybe some problem uh, with your computer just try to rectify <laughs> okay i'll go to uh, yes i am audible thank you so much yes uh, first is home visit can anyone just tell yes audible can just type what is a home visit from the name can anyone guess what is a home visit at the end um, in the question answer session we will try to unmute some of you so that we, you will be able to ask questions but right now since we are from different different i have seen people from um, darjeeling people from bangalore people from pune people from different parts of the country uh, so uh, just type anyone uh, what is a home visit any idea what is a home visit anyway you you uh, thinking so home visit itself okay like it, it, the name represent home visit right so this system to understand students better we can go to the best perfect visiting the children home perfect correct that's actually a home visit uh, home visit is actually the class teacher of a class will be visiting the home of children that is home visit okay so we have been implementing this system for the past 6 years we have been doing this system for the past 6 years so we uh, so I, i i will tell you one more thing about our school our school i told it is started in 1987 right it's in a village and it started by my father his name is d george katu tarail uh, 1987 he started the school to give good education english education for the students of my village tarawa village okay uh, so we have started with 17 students so i just i'm telling you because there are some schools yet to start right some of you are in low numbers you will have to grow you will grow we started with 17 students in 1987 in a rented building uh, with a cycle rickshaw we started uh, uh, in our uh, village so right now we have about 1300 students 150 team members and a good system or as a, a good school a, a school which is having more than 1000 students is a um, well to do school because you are doing it, doing something right right so what i why i told is we also had a very very humble beginning it's lot of struggles lot of hard work from a lot of people but through systems through hard work through dedication with god's grace we'll be able to scale up heights okay that's the assurance i have I want to give it to all of you right you will grow we will grow if we uh, work uh, hard and we will put smart works okay let's go to the system home visit means the class teacher of a class will be visiting the home we all call as a class teacher as a second mother right we call it as a second mother in the school the class teacher is the mother right so uh, visiting the home is a very integral part so i'll tell you how this happens during the starting of an academic year for example in kerala it happens in june june month the school starts the class teacher will get an idea of all are my students here we have about 30 to 35 students in a class the so class teacher will get the list of the students there will be some class ptas after two weeks uh, of starting the school on every saturday and sunday okay every saturday and sunday the class teacher will, will start visiting the schools and before visiting the school itself the class teacher will tell the parents ma'am i or sir i will be coming on this particular day through the diary not we all have diary right student diary will write the time slot what is the time what is the date which i'll be coming it will be on saturday and sunday we will take two months the june month uh, in our kerala the academic year starts in june okay so june and july this two months saturdays and sundays we will we'll go to the students home so it will be some close to some 15 16 saturdays right if you can cover some uh, three or four students in a day uh, in a, on a saturday in two months time we will be able to cover 30 to 35 children easily 
okay so that is how we visit the school we inform the parents well in advance at this particular date approximately this time i'll be visiting your home and we'll tell the children also on saturday and sunday definitely students will be at home and parents also will be at home right so we'll be visiting the home what is the importance of home visits it is very very huge for example we know that right now we all have schools and we conduct pta meetings right parents teachers meeting we always feel that the attendance is some 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%. It will never be 100%. That means parents are not coming to school, right? Parents are drifting away from the school. So what we need to do is when they are going away, we need to go towards them, right? It's our responsibility to build a great school, right? So if they are not coming, we have to go towards them. And home visit, uh, what is the lot of important? For example, home is the, the, the comfort zone of the child, right? When we visit the home, we will get a lot of input. For example, one child might not have a father. The father would be no more. One child might not have a mother. The mother will be no more. The child will be staying with her grandparents. That father and mother will be abroad. A lot of factors will get. For example, one child doesn't have a father and mother. Both of them are not, no more. They are stay, taken care by aunties, uncles, or grandparents. These are the children we should give a lot of attention right they don't have a mother at home they don't have a father at home right we should give a lot of importance they are our focus areas there are children who have everything but these are the prime as a second mother as a class teacher these are the primary focus for us so when we visit our home we get a lot of information like this whether they are with the grandparents when the children are staying with grandparents without parents that also affects them right so all these factors affect. So we will get a lot of inputs when we visit the home. And plus, we in India, we call Mata, Pita, Guru, Devam, right? Even before God, Guru comes, right? When a, vis when a teacher as a guru is visiting the home, it is considered more than God coming to your home, right? So it's a huge part for the children. Children love it. Parents also appreciate a lot because the teachers are taking the effort to go to their home. So that is called as a home visit. Here, if you take, so we'll get a little more deeper into the system. In our school, our school is a day, uh, we don't have a boarding school. So we don't have hostels. It's a day school. Okay, children come and go back to their homes. All the 1,300 students go. We have school buses and their own convenience, they come. So all our teachers are also from 10 to 15 kilometer radius. Okay, all the children are also from 20, maximum uh, 10, 15, 20 kilometer radius. So how the teachers travel is teachers travel in their own two-wheeler. In, in our school, 95% of our teachers comes in two-wheelers. Okay. Uh, so the teachers take their two-wheeler and go to their children's home for home visits. Okay. That is what they do. 5% of the teachers might not have a two-wheeler. What we'll do, we have office team. Right? We have about 10, 15 office team members. They have two-wheelers. And these office team members will assist the class teachers who don't have a two-wheeler to go to their uh, homes. And we will help them as uh, management, as uh, principals. We all help. We will facilitate because for the school, they are traveling. So we'll facilitate this. And we also give a remuneration for the teachers, okay? Because they are using their own two-wheeler and they are uh, using their own money. And for the school they're doing, we remunerate the teachers also. As per the number of students, we fix an amount and we give it to the, we give that remuneration to the teachers also, okay? This is a home visit, but it has done wonders for us. Uh, like I told, the children love it. The parents like it. Even grandparents, they all appreciate it because the class teacher is taking a lot of pain to visit the uh, home of children, right? So they have they give a lot of um, appreciation for it. Uh, I have been listening and to it because parents appreciate it. Still, there will be some ninety five percent of them will 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 wholeheartedly appreciate. They love do it. Five percent will always be there. My school or your school, or any school, they'll be there who always criticize, who are never satisfied. But our focus is the majority, right? 95% will be extremely happy that you will do, but you will see the difference because the connection between the parent and the school improves. The connection between the class teacher and the parent, because the one year or the next 200 working days, the class teacher is going to be the mother, right? So her attachment with the parents increases. So all these things will help, um, uh, help uh, the school in a lot in, in long term. We have been doing for, for the past six years. We have been increasing the numbers, the student numbers every year. Uh, we had 1,200 students before COVID. I will tell you uh, statistics. In COVID, we lost about 200 students. We reached 1,000. From 1,200, we reached 1,000. Right now, we are about 1,300. That means we have surpassed our COVID num pre-COVID numbers also. 
with systems like this. Okay, so it will definitely help, but it takes time. It will take time. It, it took us 37 long years to reach where we are, but it will happen if you put in effort. Like this is form it. Any doubts I'll cover later. Uh, I'll just show you one form also. We have one form also for home visit. The class teacher will fill a form and the class teacher will submit that filled up form to the principal. Okay. I'll just share you uh, one form. At the end of the session, Sneha Ma'am will share you some link or uh, somewhere. You will get all the forms which we use in St. Gregory School. We'll share it with you. You can use it as a reference to create your own forms. Okay. So I'll just, uh, Sneha Ma'am, I'm just uh, sharing yes. one uh, a form with you, with them. Uh, I hope uh, they are able to see the screen. Home visit form one. Yes, we can see it. Yes. Sir. Okay. So we are not going in detail. There's a form like this. The class teacher will fill the form. There's some basic details about the child, right? Who are there in the family? Whether the child has a study room, whether she has pets, is she how they study, so any routine like that. I'll share the form with you. We don't have time to go through in detail, but this is a form where the class teacher will get the signature of the parents also. Any suggestions of the parents for improvement of our school, right? Whether they're satisfied with their school, all these things are there. Then they'll get the uh, signature of the parents and they will submit it to the principals, okay? This is about home visit and this form, we'll share it with you later. We don't waste our time in that, okay? That's a home visit form. Is it clear to all of you? Home visit. Any doubts we can ask later, okay? Yes. We'll move to the next system. Yes. Uh, so, Jijit, sir, yeah. before we move, I actually also want to understand from the attendees that in your school, uh, do you already conduct home visits? And if yes, what are the couple of challenges uh, that you have faced while conducting these home visits? If you put that on the chat box, uh, I'm sure uh, Jijit, sir, would be happy to resolve all those doubts for you as well. Yeah. Uh, any doubts regarding this, you, you will be contacting home visits. Very good. Uh, if you have faced any challenges, you can share. If I have faced the same challenge, we will. Yeah, yes, we have home visit. Bharat sir has uh, told. Good, great. Any challenges, you can uh, just type it in the chat. Uh, uh, at the end, we will we will try to resolve uh, as many questions as possible. Okay. Meanwhile, let's move to the next uh, system. Yes. Rohit, can you move? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so the next system name is called as medical checkup. Okay. So can anyone guess what is a medical a checkup? I uh, just type uh, from the name itself, you will you will come to know. It's it's very simple. Medical checkup. Can anyone type from the name what is a medical checkup? Some wild guess. You will guess it correct. We agree, Sachin. Yes. I run in school in my village. It's very difficult for female teachers. Yes, how can I manage? We all we will do that. We'll we'll try to uh, go through the question. Can anyone uh, type in what is a medical checkup from the name? Can anyone guess? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'll, I'll explain. So we'll go to the second second system, which we have is medical checkup. Okay. So from the name itself, it is a medical checkup of the children. Okay. So what we we do is we have some forms. We have three forms. One is a dental checkup form. One is an eye checkup form. Third one is a physical checkup form. Okay. We have three forms. These form also, I we will share it with all of you as a format. And what we will do is we have summer vacation in Kerala. We have summer vacation in April and May. Okay. We, our academic year is from June to March and April and May we have having summer holidays. Okay. Before the summer holidays, we'll give these medical forms, these three medical forms printed for all our 1,300 students from KG to plus two. And we'll give it to them. And within this two months of summer holidays, they can consult any doctor they want, a, a dentist, a, an ophthalmologist or an eye doctor or uh, a general physician and they need to get this forms filled okay so that's a uh, that's a condition we all know that uh, for a child to learn all the factors the physical mental emotional every factor has to be in place right everything has factor has to be right but if at all any problems with the uh, with the children they will not be able for example some children so i am having headache i am having headache 
the mother or father will tell it's only because you are watching a tv or you are watching mobile for a long time that child might have a problem with the vision right with that problem that child may not be able to see the board if the child is sitting in the back bench he might not be able to see he might not be able to copy the notes in the textbook so this also will affect right and it is not uh, 100% possible for a school like us to have a medical checkup for 1300 students in the school itself with 100% capacity it is not possible right for the name sake we can do but for a parent he or she might have one child two child three child right maximum three children is what we have right nowadays we have nuclear now either it is one one or two is it for that parent getting that medical checkup for the child is not a very big thing right so what we do is we give two months of summer holidays we give them the form the parent need to take that form consult a doctor there are some standard questions we have designed this form consulting the best doctors in the town okay so in the dental checkup itself there will be um, there will be picture of a, a teeth alignment also so they just need to fill it okay the, the doctor also just need to fill it and with this we will be able to know the child is fit enough there is no dental problem there is no eye problem or general a physically a general physician when seeing the child itself the, the doctor know because he has been studying this for 7 years 8 years 10 years and consulting for more than 10 years on seeing the child itself he will he will identify the problem right so that itself is a big deal i will tell you i will tell you what happens on the so we have been doing the system for the past 6 years where we give medical forms to the children or the to the parents they fill it by the end of the academic year uh, do, using the two month summer holidays and when the school starts they'll bring it back and give it to the class teacher okay i'll give you a real life example in the first year we have 274 children out of the 1200 students at that time we never had 1200 1000 children 274 students had eye problem okay only because that we gave this form to the parent the parents were forced to take this form to an eye doctor the doctor saw the children and 274 of my children were diagnosed with problems with the eyes okay so that's the power of this form this just a form but that's a form but you think about it even if we can identify one child with one problem that itself is a big deal for us right we were able to identify 274 children like that and all the parents were extremely grateful for the school and they all told that it's only because of our form like this given from the school that i have taken my child to the doctor and doctor was able to, and even doctor himself told it's a very good system it's the right time that right you build it otherwise the child would have lost the eyesight right they, we had cases like that also okay so that's the power of a home uh, or a medical form i just want to share one feedback okay so one feedback the feedback will be in malayalam i am from kerala so but you will you will understand the emotion okay i'll just play one short video where the parent is thanking the school because of the home uh, visit i'll just <coughs> share uh, one video with you all of you uh sneham just by showing your hands just tell me whether it's playing uh we don't seem to have audio we need to play with audio audio is missing the audio is not coming in it was coming in before but uh... okay i'll just stop sharing and just otherwise you uh, you will just okay i'll just try once again ivudunna ellam check cheyan vendittu medical check up nalla form thanna prakaram njangal eye check up nadathiyappo mokku vaaikkan korche buddhimuttullayi anubhavapettu angane adhe thodarna specs vekkandi vannu അപ്പം കുറച്ചുകൂടി വൈകിയിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ അതൊരു വലിയ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടായി അങ്ങനൊരു കാര്യം ഈ സ്കൂളിൽ നിന്ന് ചെയ്തത് കാരണമാണ് നമുക്കിപ്പോൾ അതറിയാൻ സാധിച്ചത് അതിന് ഇങ്ങനൊരു സംവിധാനം ഇവിടെ ഏർപ്പെടുത്തിയ സാറിന് ഞങ്ങൾ നന്ദി പറയുന്നു uh at least uh, you you will be seeing so that's a parent of a class 4d child so the 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 so the parent was telling it's only because of a form was given from the school we had taken that form to a doctor 
the doctor told that the child has a critical problem it's a right time that you brought the child uh, uh, to uh, to me or uh, to us so we are able to fix the problem so uh, only because of the form the, the the parent was able to take the child to the doctor and the uh, problem was identified right most of the cases the earlier we can identify the problem the better we can fix the solution is easier right sometimes with wearing a specs for two years will correct otherwise sometimes lifelong we have to wear specs right so that's a thing so that's about medic i will i will share the link also with uh Sam, ma'am you can share with them so oh, what it is but i'll share the forms okay the, i'll share the uh, format of the forms also so that you can refer that customize it for this your school and implement but this is also a very powerful thing we will feel extremely good uh, because when we hear uh, words like that from parents that it's because of a school that they are able to uh, identify a very critical problem in their children uh, we'll feel a lot uh, more uh, uh, motivated to do what we do okay but it's a very good cause some parents will will feel okay i don't want to take my children i still have problems there um, uh, why can't you do the home or the medical checkups in the school for I can do for my uh, my students 1,200, but you can also imagine how effective a school like us can do medical checkups for 1,200 students. Even if we take 10 days, okay, 10 days also it is 120 students or 130 students in a day, right? Uh, it is not genu uh, genuinely we cannot do, but for the namesake we can do, but we are not doing for the namesake, right? We are doing for a purpose. So we will have issues from parents. I don't want to take my children, right? But we need to convince, okay? It's been, I have been doing it for the past eight years to convince the parents just to take it. Whoever is uh, being a rebel to me also, I will try to uh, try to convince them, okay? Because uh, there's a purpose why we run a school, right? Purpose why we do some things. This is uh, about uh, any doubts regarding this, you can ask me at the end of it, okay? Yes, Sneha ma'am. Jijo, sir, before we proceed, we actually have a bunch of questions regarding our first system home visits. Uh, Deepti, ma'am, uh, actually have a very critical question. She runs a school in a rural area and she finds it's very difficult to have female teachers go and do the home visit. So how do we solve for that? Uh, I think, ma'am, I will answer this question. Uh, it's better that we will do it in the end of this. Okay, I'll take up this question, but end sure. of it, we'll just note it down. I will go to Sure. In our school, 95% of my teachers are lady teachers, okay, female teachers, 95% of them are lady teachers. Out of the 95 uh, lady teachers, 95% of them are coming in two-wheelers or so 90% of them comes in two-wheelers. That system works for me, for in our school, the teachers not driving, but definitely we need to convince the teachers why we do it, right? But uh, initially, I was also with them. I, I explained to them why we are doing it and all. Female teachers, if you take that, we just have about six male teachers. Out of the 70 teaching community we have, we have only six uh, gen staff and 94 of them are, uh, sorry, uh, 64 of them are lady teachers. So, so I also run a similar school. It's in a village itself. But in Kerala, the villages might not be very remote village. So we have extremely remote villages. But ours is a developed village, but still a village, not a town, not a city, but we are doing it. But like I told, this is a concept, okay? Home visit is a concept, but you try to customize this as per your school, right? For example, do it for one class, at least one class. If you cannot do it for the entire school, one teacher or let's let's take a JKG and SKG, LKG, UKG, I will try to do. Next year, I will try to do that. Or JKG, I will try to do that. Like that, at least something we should do. But definitely that's a challenge, but we have to customize it as per our geography. Uh, ours also is in a village. Ours also 95% of them are female teachers, but we are doing it for the past six years. Okay. We'll take up questions like definitely this will help. I'll try to cover these systems as early as fast as possible and we'll take up questions. Okay. Yes. Tamam, you just noted down. We'll go through all the questions. Of course. Yes. Rohit, can we proceed? Yeah, yes. Okay, next is uh, from the name is a 100% participation award for parents. Okay, so we all know that uh, the parents participation in development of the child and development of the school is very critical, right? At, uh, uh, at the maximum, whatever is the participation of the parents, only in that amount we can grow as a school, right? So we all know that there are a lot of, uh, lot of events in the school. For example, there can be science exhibitions, there can be other cultural activities, 
there can be arts day there can be sports day there can be annual day celebrations grandparents lot of lot of uh, celebrations will be there where we expect our 100% of the parents we always expect 100% right we don't expect it to be 50 we always our target is always 100% we want 100% of our parents to come right if you want 100% of parents to come uh, we need to appreciate them also right so this is the way in which we appreciate the parents who attends 100% of the events happening in a school for example there will be some how many events in a school for the parent there will be lot of event for the children but we expect parents to come for 5 6 7 8 maximum 10 events in an entire academic year right so what we need to do is we need to track the attendance of parents okay we need to track the attendance of parents who all are coming we need to give an award to the parents who are attending all the events of us for example um, uh, the arts day the sports day the science exhibition science exhibition all our children will be making a lot of exhibits right we need parents to come and see and appreciate them otherwise it's it's a it's a waste right so we'll track all the attendance and we at the end of the year we analyze which all are the parents who are having all the 10 events if there is 10 events all the 10 events which all are the parents from jkg to plus 2 who come and attend the event will appreciate that okay so i have started this slowly last year okay last year was the first time that we did we had 300 parents who attended all the events in the school out of the 1300 300 parents attended the event attended all the events in the previous academic year okay so what we did is we uh, conducted an event on our stage we put red carpet we, like a, like an award ceremony itself we invited all the 300 parents in different different days 1 to 4 in one day 5 to 8 in another day 9 to plus 2 classes 9 to plus in another day jkg and skg in different days we conducted different different ways in which we called all the 300 we called them onto the stage our chairman gave them a certificate and a medal also you can see from the slide one uh, father and mother collecting a certificate from me and she has a medal in, in on her neck right anything you can give uh, the gift is irrespective because all these years all our parents are clapping their hands for their children right when the the children is getting an award on the stage they clap right now we are giving an opportunity for the parents to come on to the stage and feel the happiness we all love getting an award right who don't like giving an award giving getting an appreciation so the parents when they come for coming into the school and attending the events it gives a lot of happiness to the parents like getting an award and getting a photo click right now it's like you can see one photo our children are sitting uh, just a small our school is a very small school is a humble school okay but whatever ways possible conduct an award event call the parents who uh, attended all the days in the school events uh, give them uh, just a certificate uh, one certificate will cost you 10 rupees okay 300 means 300 or 3000 rupees but the impact it will give is tremendous this time last time we had 300 parents i'm expecting next time it will become 500 okay on seeing every year it will increase uh, because they are never appreciated no we have never appreciated parents coming on we always tell okay these parents are absent but what is the appreciation we are giving in for the parents who come right we need to appreciate them and and uh, motivate them for coming to school again and again right so this is a way in which we appreciate parents to come to the schools and we give them a award so a certificate is more than enough okay so that is about 100 parent participation award last year we had 300 parents next year i am hoping it will become 500 ultimately it will become 1300 that's a dream where every parent attends every event of the school yeah that's a, that's about this system jeejo sir i'm actually very curious to understand you know usually we see 100% attendance awards for students right but yes. this is such a unique concept where uh, you you are you are appreciation your parent community i want to understand how did you come up with this idea uh this is actually my all these other ideas i learned from other schools right right now uh, i have about 30 attendees who's coming to learn right they already will be implementing some system some of them will be learning some new system today and they'll be implementing it their own school that's the purpose behind all these session i learn from different school i visit different schools i talk to school owners i talk to teachers and i am 100% involved in my own school for the past 8 years i resigned every job of mine and i uh because two purpose for me one is i want to stay with, take care of my parents because my parents uh my father started the school my mother was working with canara bank so she used to take care of the finances right so that's how the school grew and it's my own school and i resigned my job every corporate job to two reasons one i want to take care of my parents who uh, was given me this life and second is take care of the school which i studied and it's their blood sweat and tears that school right 
So these two things, I am 100% available in school. I always study the school. I always study the children. I always study the parents. I always study the teachers. From them, we will get ideas, right? And when visiting other schools also, this idea is actually my own idea where I felt that we should apply because we have 100% uh, this was my bonus sister. I'll just in one sentence I'll explain. Stay home say we all might have hundred percent student attendance award, right? Yes. The student who is attending all the days in an, uh, for example, we have two hundred working days in Kerala, mostly two hundred working days out of three sixty five days. Uh, the child who is attending all the two hundred working days will be given an award, like hundred percent award for the year will be given. That's my bonus. Sister. We had about fifty five children. Uh, getting getting 100 percent attendance award last year that means out of 1200 55 children attended all the 200 working days of the not even a single day they missed okay so that's a way in which we can appreciate the because when children comes to school every day there's no gap in their academics right they have a continuity right that's an attitude also right you should they will have a lot of reasons like weddings will be there, some housewarmings will be there, ceremonies will be there, festivals will be there. They'll be tempted to take attendance and it's not important. I'll go for this, right? We need to appreciate them who uh, just push hard and just come to school every day. Just give a real life example. 55 of my children from KG to plus two attended all the 200 working days last year. Okay, so that's a, just a step. But that's another system. Bonus system, I'm just giving you 100% attendance award for students every year we give okay on the investor ceremony we call the students we customize trophies for them because it's 55 of them with their names sometimes with photos we customize and give it appreciate them on the investor ceremony in front of all the 1200 students that's what we do okay we'll move to the next yes okay so i'll go to the last uh, system this is a fourth system uh, use of an ERP or a soft. ERP means enterprise resource planning. That's a full form of ERP. Simply means a software. Okay. We all know WhatsApp as a software, uh, Zoom as a software. Almost all my 29 attendees of the schools, you will be using a software in the school, correct? Because for taking the fees, everything, there'll be a software. But I, in my interaction with a lot of schools in Kerala, I feel that there'll be some 70% of the schools uses a software but 30% of them don't use a software. I highly recommend you should use a software. Any software you can use in your own locality. What is the best software which is used in best schools in your, in your place? Enquire about that and get that software. In that software, you can do everything like fees collection can be done uh, or even ID cards, right? Admit card, I, uh, identity cards of children will be taken from out from there examination mark can be entered, report cards can be generated, communication to parents can be done. All these things can be done through a software. And the major thing right now, all of you know that it has moved, after COVID, it has moved to an internet generation, right? Uh, I'll tell you one example uh, before COVID. So in our school, 90, more than 90% or 95% or mostly 100% of our parents used to pay fees as physical cash, right? Because our, our say, schooling, uh, we don't have hostels. Our children come to school every day. We have the, They have a school diary, right? The parents will put the fees as cash inside the diary. Our office will take the cash. 100% of the collections was cash collections before COVID. Okay. In our, it's a village, right? Uh, but the, the challenge with that is you think about it. The school will be working from Monday to Friday, right? From 9 p.m., 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. or 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. Okay. This is the time. Only during this period, the, the fees can be collected or the parents or some of uh, 20, 30 percent of the parents will directly come to office, pay the fees as cash. But think about it, that only during that 9 a.m. to 3.30 window, they can pay the fees, right? If considered as an online system, right now after COVID, everything is that UPI payment is there, online payment is there, net banking is there. Even when you are sleeping also, one parent can pay the fees, right? It cannot, it need not be from Monday to uh, Saturday, Monday to Friday. Or on a Sunday also, they can pay. The school will be from 9 a.m. to 3.30, right? At night, 10 a.m. also, one parent staying in abroad can pay the fees from Dubai. From uh, We have a lot of NRI parents also. Fees collection is a challenge for all of us, right? You all admit that that's a major challenge which we face, fees collection. You should not have any bottleneck in the fees collection, right? When an online system is implemented or a software is implemented, the parents can pay fees whenever they, they are comfortable. They are on convenience. We need the money, right? We need fees to come. That's the oxygen for the school, right? So having a software is very important. I always suggest as an online or software where 
our parents can pay online fees and you as an owner or, or as a key decision maker, your phone will have an app where you will see, okay, what is the collection which has come today? What is the pending collection, right? All these things you will get from, so that is from the fees collection perspective, you should need a software. I have another thing where I have, I have told you that we have print ID cards, right? Identity cards of children from the software, right? So what we do is we will make sure that all the 1,300 students data inside the software is correct. For example, uh, the name of the child, name of the parent, the mobile number, everything is correct. When we take a printout of that as an identity card from the software, there will not be any mistakes in it, right? Earlier, we what we used to do is we used to call a photographer. The photographer will take the photo. We will write the student name, what all details needed to be in the ID card. We will write it. The photographer will decide, put the photo and the back and forth, back and forth, proofreading, proofreading, proofreading. It will go back and forth. At the end of it, after giving, there will be 20% mistakes still there. There will be spelling mistake in the parent's name, spelling mistake in child's name. All these things will be there. But right now, for the past three, four years, we are taking printouts from the software directly, right? So we'll get the uh, output. We'll give it to a printer vendor and we'll print it, for example. So you just think about it. Whatever data going from the school, it has to be correct, right? The name of the child, the name of the parent, the mobile number or what a blood group, whatever we type should be correct, right? If you see, for example, the name is Abhijit, okay? A Abhijit can be written in multiple ways. It can be A-B-H-I or A-B-I or Abhijit, J-W-E-T-H. It can be written in multiple. In the birth certificate, there will be only one right way to write the name, right? For example, Jijo. Jijo name is G-I-G-O. It can be written J-I-J also, but my name is G-I-G-O. It can be written G-I-G only, right? So those kind of things also matters for that because I can tell that I have 1,300 students. There will be mistakes, right? But for that child, Abhijit, parent, Abhijit might be the only child or a, one or two children, right? It matters to them. That, that name coming correct on the ID card matters to that parent, right? But uh, as a school, we cannot tell that we have 1,000 children or we have 500 students. There might be mistakes. Error free is our thing, right? If we can correct the mistakes in the software, if the printout is taken from the software, then there will not be any mistakes also. I'll give you one more example. Every time, whenever there's an achievement in the school, right? One child has participated in an inter-school sports meet. The child has won an award, right? We'll make a poster like, okay, this child has participated. He has won first prize. We'll type the name also there, also, uh, correct? So that name also should be correct, right? It should not, most of them, what happens is, okay, the sports teacher will tell the name. Okay, the name is Abhijit. We will type it, but that might not be the spelling of Abhijit, okay? The Abhijit spelling is correct. So if we can take from the software, which is correct data, Everywhere when you use it from the software, everywhere the data will be correct or the child's name, the parent's name will be correct. It helps you a lot that it helps us in building a error-free system or error-free data from the school sense. Okay. So that's about use of a software. A lot of importance to software. But these are some of the things I can tell you. You should have a software for fees collection, for communication with parents, for ID cards, even report cards. Rather than writing with our own hands, if you can enter the data in a software, it will come as a printout. It will look neat also, right? So it, it actually improves the uh, face of the school, right? The quality uh, of the school, a, a lot of change will happen. I highly recommend all of you to use any software. Uh, LEED is also another software. Like we are, we are a LEED forward school from the past two years. A lead is our academic software. Whatever academics marks enter, we will get the data from the uh, lead software. We have another administrative software where we use it for report cards, fees collection, everything we use. You can use any software. Just check with which is the best school in that in the town, in the town, in the in the in the city or in the village. Use that software. For example, the software will cost you only uh, the best of the best software will cost you only twenty rupees per student per month. If you have thousand students. It will cost you only 20,000 rupees per month or in a year, only 2 lakh rupees per year. Okay, if you divide it with the 1,000 children, it's only it's a nominal fees only it will come for a software. But it's highly recommended you should use it. Okay, so these are the four systems. One is home visit. Second is medical checkup forms. Third is a 100% parent participation award. Fourth is use of a software. Okay, uh, these are the four. And a bonus system is 100% student... Uh, attendance award for the entire year. That's a bonus system. These are the systems. Uh, right now, even I don't want to uh, waste any more time. Okay, now uh, Sneha ma'am can ask you. Uh, yes. Uh, attendees, uh, you know, apart from all the systems that, you know, Jesus, Jesus sir has explained, 
are there any unique systems that you have implemented uh, in your school that ensures sustainable growth? If yes, then please put your uh, answers on the chat box. And uh, while you do that, uh, Jijo sir, we'll go back to the questions that some of our attendees have asked, like, you know, uh, about uh, someone is asking how to deal with parents, uh, how to deal with parents who refuse to pay fees. <coughs> Yeah, that's all these things are valid questions, which will only come from a key decision maker. Okay, or who uh, who's it, it's it's a pain always, always there. I will tell you 95%, 90% of them are very good parents who, who understand the systems. Uh, but definitely there'll be problems. Uh, but we need to deal with it. So um, uh, it, there should be systems. I'll tell you how uh, I tackle. I am also 100%. I still have dues. Okay. I'm also not perfect. But some of the systems and even uh, good schools or like uh, good hearted schools, we cannot penalize the child also, right? Because the fees has to be paid by the parent. If we can make the child to stand outside or call the name of the child in front of the class, these things we don't do because we don't want to penalize the child for the mistake the parent has done. So all these things we don't do. Some schools do that in the sense like uh, uh, the there'll be a, the this fees fees dues will be put in the notice board and fees will be announced inside the class. All these things are strategies, but we don't do. What we do is. Uh, we'll have multiple examinations, right? So in lead, we have some assessments, like we have some middle of the year. So we have called it half yearly examination, yearly examination. Before that, what we'll do is we will give a admit card. Okay, we'll print an admit card and give physical admit card, physical admit card for all the students from JKG to plus two, one or two weeks before the examination. And we'll call the parents and give the admit card to children. And before getting that admit card, will tell you you have to clear the fees. Till that time, whatever is the fees, you need to clear it. Okay, then only we will give the that card. With that strategy, 90% of the fees will come. And you have to do it well in advance, not like one day before the examination. Two weeks before the examination, you will start. Within two weeks, follow, 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 follow. It is a pain, I, I understand, but we need to pay. We need to pay our teachers, no? So we, I have about 150 team members and there's lakhs and lakhs of rupees is needed for salaries and allowances. I still struggle, but this is one strategy we choose as a uh, logical study. Before the examination, we give admit cards to children. We call the parents to collect it physically. And when they come, they will clear the fees. 90% of it happens like that. 10% we will tell, okay, after within this examination duration itself, we'll give the admit card. We'll not, uh, uh, we'll not, not allow the child to write. Our objective is for the child to write, right? But we will tell them, okay, within the examination time itself, you need to clear the fees. Okay. So that is one strategy which we use, which will work. But I also struggle with collecting fees like you. Yes. There was this another question, Jijo, sir, where uh, someone had asked that, you know, how to uh, convince parents uh, for home visits? A lot of the parents, you know, are working or are busy and they're trying to um, maintain a very difficult schedule any which way. So how to sort of convince them that, you know, something like this, an engagement activity like this is for your own good, is for your own child's good. How do that convincing method uh, would work? Like if, if you have a teacher, what do they need to say to the parents that they can also convince the parents to engage with this system of yours? Okay. So uh, as a leader, uh, all of you are key decision makers. You all know that it it, it works, right? It, uh, it, even if it's a pain for our teachers, for the school, but definitely it will do good, we know, right? We need to customize it as per your school, as per the geography, as per your parents. For example, someone is starting a new school, right? It's easy for you to build a culture like that, right? Starting from, I also, we have about 1,200 parents. What I do is I talk to parents in the sense, just like common meetings like this, there'll be PTA meetings, there'll be online, even during COVID times, this two years, 2020, 2021 and 2022, I used to conduct a lot of, uh, monthly, bi-monthly, or once in three months, once in four months, I used to conduct meetings through Zoom, okay? During those times, I'll repeat why we are doing Because parents understand, the only thing is we need to communicate why we are doing it. We Because we are taking a lot of effort, right? A class teacher to visit, it's not the parent who is taking the effort. Parents are telling, I need to stay back. My teacher has to take a two-wheeler in the hot sun. He or she has to travel this all distance. She has to go to their home, conduct one home visit after the other. We have to conduct it for 35. It's a pain is by the teacher, not by the parent. Parent can tell that I cannot stay back home. 
ideally what you need is uh, there will be pen i will tell you 95 percent of them will agree there will be definitely five percent of them they'll tell they'll be selfish they don't understand the system they don't value ideally you don't want parents like that okay for that what do you need is you need to build your school as a brand okay a brand everyone needs 100 uh, right now we are in a position where we are behind parents please come uh, pay the fees please study in our school with these systems like this we need to build our school as a good brand a good brand has a value and a branded school every parent want to enroll our child in a branded school then you can demand till the time we need to convince we need to convince we need to convince we need to convince from that uh, 17 students to 100 students to 500 students to 1000 students to 1300 to 1500 or 3000 you need to scale up by till your maximum then you need to eliminate all the five percentage because we don't want them because this is my school i have my own systems which i believe that it will do good for my children we will do our hundred percent we'll die for our children but we need your cooperation okay you have to do there will be challenges the only thing is communicate okay you as a leader understand the concept convince your teachers convince your entire system of teachers principals vice principals coordinators hod's convince your internal system through them try to convince the parents okay this is the strategy i use uh, as per my understanding 90 percent of my parents are aligned to the system for the it took me six seven eight years okay it'll take time but we need to strive okay i think that's the only way which you can uh, uh we get it right yeah, it will take time but uh, it will happen correct sir of course uh Rija, sir, on the same lines uh bharat sir is asking that you know most parents uh always shift the responsibility on teachers and say that, you know, it is your responsibility to, you know, groom the students or to be completely responsible of the uh, of their children. How do we convince them that there is also a responsibility yeah. from the parents? And like you said, uh, very right, right, rightfully that, you know, there would always be that 5% who would not engage, who would not cooperate. Um, and I think it finally comes down to uh, the intention of parents as well, if they want to engage, right? So what do you have to say regarding that? Uh, uh, the, the question is very right. We all go through it. Right? All the schools will go through that. I will tell you uh, uh, 5%. It can be 10% in some schools, but not more than 80%. 20% will be maximum in a school. 80% will be aligned because... Uh, every parent also we all know that the reality right the school timing in our school let's say it can be from 9 30 to 3 30 right only during that that window we can influence the child the remaining time the child is in the home right the value systems or the child doing the homework or the child studying for the examination or revising the portions definitely the school has limitation right school has 1300 students in the home it's a responsibility of the parent that's a reality most of the parents also understand but ideal uh, normally what parents do is they put the blame on it's a, it's a reality they they want somebody to put the blame the husband will put the blame on the mother the mother will put the blame on the school or the class teacher and the finally the parent will come and dump all the it's only because of your teachers it's like that there are some five percent ten percent cases like that all these things uh, uh, we need to equip our teachers like we have to constantly train our teachers our academic system should be good we should monitor the system. We should make sure that our system, our school system, academics, non-academic system is perfect. Or even if it, we, no system will be perfect, but we need to keep on improving our system. Wherever the shortcoming, it will be there. Mistakes in the teachers, correct those small, small mistakes. We are not correcting the uh, not book correction is not good, right? You, uh, correct all these areas where we have the control, but, but there will definitely be that 5%. The only solution to that is you become as a brand, right? Where you become in the commanding role, and you have to, because that's a hard reality, right? That five ten percent has to go from your school, genuinely. But but you have to put in your effort. Hundred percent of your own, you need to put that. Where all I am lacking, my system is lacking. I will correct it. But gen, gen, generally, for your your own irresponsibility and your own blaming game, they're putting. I don't want or we don't want parents like it because we cannot help them. Because for the child to be a good child or uh, be a great citizen of the country. We need the support of the parents. A school and parent has to work hand in hand. That's a reality. Without that, it will not happen. Okay. So we, we just communicate, try to communicate with them. Communication actually works. I am a strong believer of communication. What is there? I be, I communicate to parents multiple ways, like communicate through the teachers, through the principals, through the coordinators, directly also whenever you get a chance, you 
here in our uh, kerala uh, tuitions you all know tuitions right after school hours they go for tuitions all the time so one thing is a lot of nuisance happens in tuitions so right now for the past 3 4 years i am trying telling the teachers or parents don't send your children for tuitions don't send your children we will take care we will take care so but it's still 50% of my children go for tuitions so we need to keep on communicating uh, till we achieve the results but definitely like bharat sir it's a, it's a challenge but we have to go through it thank you jesus sir for uh, uh, answering all those questions and attendees you know if you have any other questions apart from questions around home visits if you have questions on erp uh, how to implement it uh, what could be the possible challenges uh, you know uh, when you when you when you implement or when you introduce uh, an erp software into your school uh, all those questions uh, jesus sir would be happy to answer uh, based on his experience with the software or with any of his systems right and uh, while you do that put your questions on the on the chat box and while you are at it uh, i'm going to uh, welcome shalini bhattacharya on this webinar she heads uh, the brand pr and uh, social media charters uh, for lead uh, lead has been uh, doing phenomenal work our entire mission is to democratize education for every student in the country and we have been there for 11 years and shalini if you could uh, come and uh, tell us talk, talk to us about the vision of the brand what we do and what all our products are sure um thank you so much first of all uh, jijo sir and sneha it's been a very interesting conversation uh this past 45 minutes i think uh, our attendees have hopefully gotten a lot of ideas that they can uh, implement in their schools uh, to engage better with their parents <clears throat> and to drive better learning outcomes for their students so um since we brought up the topic of learning outcomes um i am sure a lot of you may already have heard of lead group if not a quick uh, introduction um can we have the next slide please while i do that introduction so essentially um lead group is a house of brands um and we work uh, solely with schools across india so everything that we do Uh, that each one of us does at work each day is around making sure that schools across India are able to operate better, are able to deliver better learning outcomes, are able to train teachers better. Um, I'll I'll move on to the history in a bit, but uh, essentially, therefore, what you see is uh what we offer. We offer integrated learning programs for students. uh which means that when we say integrated, it means uh it's a combination of books. uh books from lead and books from pearson which is one of the world's most loved uh education brands um we go into schools and we help to digitalize school classrooms to deliver better multimodal learning uh because we understand that each child learns differently some learn best through uh books some learn through activities some learn through audio visual kits um or, or means and so that's what also uh, comprises a part of our offering um secondly we also bring to your classrooms uh kits that your students and teachers can use to learn and teach respectively again this is a part of our philosophy where we understand that each child learns differently some children learn best in classrooms by doing activities so we offer those kind of activity kits as well and the next slide please um one of our most loved offerings is a program called elga uh some of you may may not have heard about it but just a quick uh, introduction to english language general awareness which is the full form of uh, the term elga um what it what we basically try and do through that is that we try and teach english as a skill so uh depending on the current english proficiency levels of a child uh we will make sure that the child begins learning english uh as a skill corresponding to uh to her level and we'll make sure uh, that the child is able to come up to grade level english proficiency very very quickly um we also understand that learning is not only inside classrooms learning is not only through books and blackboards and you know uh, uh, and uh, 
uh, uh, kids or or you know audiovisual content we understand that learning is also about exposure and exposure to experts and successful people who have a lot to to teach children um so what you uh, what you will gain by uh, partnering with lead is also exposure for your students to celebrities and experts through our masterclass program and one of the one of the most uh, endearing aspects of lead is that we bring students from across oh. india uh, together uh, to give them a platform to shine on a national championship which is called the lead championships but again this is just a gist of some of the things that lead is doing each day every day essentially to make sure that students in your schools um have the best exposure possible uh to to truly uh, deliver holistic learning the next slide please uh again we're living in the world of ai and uh, vr and mr and you know there's no escaping the fact that technology is changing the education and the school landscape in india so uh, we also offer academic erp solutions with complete visibility of student and teacher performance which means that you as a school owner um will have a 360 degree view of what is happening inside each of your classrooms so at a classroom level at a teacher level you'll be able to understand how your students are performing what their remedial needs are um and generally streamline your school operations through our um academic erp solutions we have also uh, started offering ai based digital assessments um what that basically means is that uh, you will have the ability to customize the way assessments are delivered uh, to your students in a particular classroom you can filter according to the level of difficulty according to what the duration of an assessment should be so it's all about you having the power as a school owner to really drive assessments the way you'd like to in your school of course we share real time insights on student performance so that you in turn can share that with uh, uh with your parents we have a very robust app a student app which both students and parents have access to simply because we understand that um schools need to make sure that parents are in the loop on their uh, on their ward's performance and of course we enable uh, important communication from schools to parents on an ongoing basis next slide please all right now uh, it's a no brainer uh, jijo sir was also talking about his teachers and we are completely in alignment with the fact that unless teachers are empowered and enabled in the classroom uh 21st century learning can not really happen uh so more power to teachers from us how do we enable that first of all we make sure we're able we're we're um saving teacher time uh we offer preloaded content uh with lesson plans and resources built in on tabs for teachers um we offer both online and offline training and certification programs for teachers and of course we offer in person training sessions where you know um uh, lead group staff will essentially sit in in classrooms and help your teachers teach the best way so uh again uh, every everything that we're doing is also working in some way on fashion towards enabling and empowering uh, teachers in every school the next slide please all right so we already covered the fact that we uh, will help you with setting up an experience hub uh why an experience hub because as as a school it's very important for you to help your uh, stakeholders your parents understand that um uh, i think uh, shalini just uh, probably must have lost her internet connection we we'll just give a minute
Sorry, I kind of got disconnected for a second. Sneha, did you chip in or should I just continue from where I am? No, you can, you can continue. I just, I just okay. asked that in days to wait okay. for a minute. Sorry, everyone, I ran out of battery. These things also happen, I guess, on Zoom calls. But yeah, um, so essentially, uh, I was speaking about the fact that we will help you set up uh, an experience hub where your parents, both existing and prospective parents, can come in and really uh, experience for themselves what uh, their uh, their child will feel like, you know, studying in 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 a lead powered school. Um, Teacher orientation is also um, is also a, a part of our uh, early offerings where essentially we understand that parents typically tend to approach teachers, right, with all kinds of questions. So how can you train your teachers to address all kinds of teacher, uh, sorry, parent queries? Um, and how can you help them better engage parents on an ongoing basis? For example, Jijo uh, spoke about, you know, teachers... Uh, visiting uh, students' homes. Uh, but the other way also works, where parents are walking into your schools and, you know, asking questions of your teachers or are meeting you in person to uh, make special requests. So how how do you handle those situations? And how do you make sure that your school's engagement with teachers is always top-notch? Uh, that is something we will help you with. Um, we will also uh, train your admissions coordinator to run these parents' orientation, uh, orientation sessions. So if you have an academic coordinator or you have an admissions coordinator, we will work with that person, uh, again, to help you drive admissions for your school, which we understand is so important for growth. Next slide, please. Um, I was speaking about the fact that we are a, a multi-brand organization. Um, so on the screen, you can see the four custom programs or custom offerings that we uh, bring to any school, depending on your school's needs, uh, depending on uh, what kind of growth plans you have, uh, what your current stage is in terms of uh, school operations, etc. Uh, so we have LEAD, we have Pearson, we have a Pinnacle program, and then we have a program called Propel. Um, and to, to basically know any details about it, I think we'll have to move to the next slide. Uh, there is a number and an email ID on your screen, uh, which you can email uh, us to request any kind of information about the four programs that we offer uh, schools. And of course, you can also visit our website. Uh, you'll find detailed information on our offerings and how each one is unique and different from the other and what will work best for your school. Uh, we're happy to help if you give us a call on the number on the screen. Uh, before we move on, just one little, um, uh, I think, uh, 30 seconds about who we are and what we do. Uh, what we do, we've already actually covered, but who we are, uh, this webinar would be incomplete without sort of mentioning the fact that uh, we've been in operations as India's largest and possibly only school at Tech Unicorn for nearly 11 years now. So that's 11 years of experience and we work uh, as as uh, Sneha has already shared with 9,000 plus schools across the country. Uh, we're very fortunate in that we have a very passionate uh, uh, founder couple uh, who, who help to inspire us and uh, who help to make sure that we are able to service uh, you know schools like you better and better uh, each day. So that's it from my side. Um, I think we have some questions lined up uh, for Jijo sir, Sneha, and we can take Yeah, that. there is there's actually one very interesting, uh, not so much as a question, but as someone who has shared that, you know, uh, she has implemented a parent cell sort of a thing to engage with uh, parents. Uh, okay. And I think it is essentially the same as, you know, what, what you're doing uh, for parents to increase their engagement with the school. Jijo sir, I, I actually have a question for you. All the systems that you have implemented for your school, what is the kind of, uh, you know, equity that you have uh, sort of established for yourself or gotten for yourself in the Kerala market? Like uh, these are definitely helping, right? But uh, uh, what do you what do you think what needs to be like there's there are KDMs right now on this webinar who have just started a school. What would your recommendation be to these uh, key decision makers that, you know, because even though you're starting a system, there could be some hiccups. 
so so what would your uh, suggestion tip feedback uh, uh, to to these new kdms would be uh, new kdms uh, all the very best uh, so you, we all are doing it so uh, we have to be motivated the thing is uh, we will get demotivated sometimes but always get motivated how we should get motivated is you are running a school okay so you are creating the future of your future of the country for example in our school there are 1300 students right i i don't have any control of the world we all uh, tell about the problems and the only thing i have a control is the 1300 students studying in my school right whatever is possible to build in value systems to build in culture build in good academic systems build in non academic activities i need to keep on strike so that should motivate all of you right it's it's all a very hard job it's not at all easy but you had to find your inner motivation with that okay it, you are doing a noble course at the end of it that's a that's a great purpose to live to be very frank all, all we all ask what is the purpose of my life what is the purpose of my life if you are a key decision maker in a school or if you are a teacher in a school that is the greatest greatest purpose you can serve as a human being okay so that that has to motivate all of us uh, there will be challenges the only thing is uh, you should have a vision right no systems will be will work magic there is no magic in in in, in a school system you should always implement a system in my last slide uh, it's like that no systems are perfect it has to be monitored and uh, continuously evaluated right Uh, put a system. Just evaluate the system. Uh, the main thing is communication. You have to communicate. Communicate with the teachers. Communicate with the principals. Communicate if possible. Communicate with the parents. Right. You should reach the end users. Okay. So that communication will actually work. You will get inputs like next year you will improve a little more better. Next time uh, it can be a little more better. Like that you better better better. Home visit it has been. We have been doing it for the past eight years, right? It's still not perfect. Next year it can be a little more better, right? Some small, small things we can in, in, improve, where the system will keep on improving and it will help us to grow. Okay, uh, but build systems. Uh, the main one more uh, humble request, all of you, have a learner mindset, right? Uh, you should have a mindset to learn. Like whenever you are visiting a school from this webinar, also you attended because you wanted to learn, right? so you will learn some things and then you need to customize it as per your audience and your geography your parents your teachers you do it. but uh, the main key is to have a learner mindset a learner for lifetime you have to learn and you have to be open to feedback you have to be humble uh, enough to uh, accept others feedbacks right so all these things will help you uh, but overall build some good systems uh, it will help you in long run to uh, from 100 students to 100 to 300 will help you thank you so much ujo sir uh, for your time this has been a wonderful session uh, attendees as you can see on your uh, chat box there is a very short survey link please take a moment to uh, click on that link and there are just couple of questions uh, uh, give us your feedback and we will uh, like ujo sir said we are, we are also learners and uh, through that the next webinar that we come we we also want to uh, come up with better and better knowledge uh, sessions for you uh, so take a moment uh, to fill fill in this uh, very short uh, feedback form and also on your screen you would uh, you would see our contact details take a quick screenshot of that uh, just give us a missed call and our team would be happy to help you in whatever way uh, possible uh, thank you everyone who has attended uh this webinar uh we will come come back with more webinars in the upcoming months and thank you jujo sir once again uh for your time and for this wonderful session thank you shalini um and we'll hope to see you again possibly in the next 14 days thank you yeah yes, thank you so thank much you. all of you all the attendees thank you so much for your valuable time and thank you so much shalini ma'am and sneha ma'am Uh, for giving me an opportunity to share uh, some of the things i know uh, with the uh, key decision makers uh, i i loved it thank you so much for the opportunity okay thank and i so appreciate much. the team behind lead rohit and siddharth also thank you so much thank you so much it was a pleasure thank you so much bye bye thank bye. you bye everyone bye.